Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Your Persuasion Coach and Neuro Persuasion. I am Wayne Sutton, and I'm here with someone that I will have to say, Joseph, seems like my brother. We just really met, sort of connected. Like so many similarities in what you do and, and your website. And I love just, again, I had finally said, we're going to hit the record button and start talking because I've been talking for hours. Um, Joseph, I know you're a, pro- a personal and professional development coach. Mm-hmm. And I know we got a lot of coaches that follow us. We have a lot of salespeople, professionals, high performers, and I'm so excited to have you on today. And I'm really excited about the topic. So I'm like, hey, what are we going to talk about? What should we, what should we, I always like that one topic. And, and then you come back with this, how to never work a day in your life. You know, I'm like, well, that sounds good. I want to learn that. Much. <laughs> um, but I do want to say thanks for jumping on our podcast and uh, take a moment and introduce yourself and tell us a little about you and then we're going to dive deep. Absolutely. It's great to be here with you. Like you said, you know, from, from the first time we talked about anything, it, it, it like it just clicked everything and it just keeps bouncing and getting better and better. So I, I'm really excited to be here with you. It's an honor to get to be here with you and, and have this conversation. My name is Joey Drollshagen. I'm a certified coach. I'm an author a keynote speaker. I developed programs in my whole life, really. I have a 28 year career in corporate America help. And, and I didn't plan it this way, but I helped companies that were either going into or in bankruptcy to come out that other side back into profitability. I work with a lot of sales teams. I work with a lot of realtors. I, I just work with, and, and even people looking for that transformation, you know, but a big part of my, my audience is, is, is it tends to lean into people who like can't stand doing what they're doing for work. You know, and that was my experience. Out of that 28-year career, I was really good at what I did, Wayne, but I didn't enjoy it. I knew from the time I was 22 years old that I wanted to inspire, motivate people to live better lives, and it started with me. And I became a student of it then, but then all the conditioning, the patterns, the paradigms, you know, life happening and everything else that gets in the way of doing that. So I ended up about 12 years ago really stepping out um, through a series of events that happened in my life. i just walk you really quickly through and we can get into that conversation is that is <clears throat> from the time I was 22 until my late thirties, I, I, with everything inside of me, I wanted to live this life and I would try and do it part-time and I would try and do it on the side because I was conditioned that a man gets a job, supports a family and hopefully lives long enough to enjoy some retirement. And once that conditioning was within me, I would not break that no matter what I, I, I would try to go up against it and I would, continually be brought back into doing falling back into that into that role of what society what I was taught I need to live at some point I finally with complete frustration I said you know what this isn't working you know none of this stuff it's all a bunch of crap and you know and and, and really I just got to that point disappointment because what happened is I went from being disappointed in all the different avenues I was trying to disappointed in myself feeling like there was something wrong with me. And so that I started using food and alcohol. And, and, you know, there's a long story here. I'm skipping through a lot of it. But ultimately, I said, this isn't working, man. I can't keep living this way. And, and, and so I said, okay, I'm going to come up with a, my, my new plan. I forget all this stuff here. My new plan is I'm going to put everything I have into retiring as soon as I can. Then I'll be free, right? <laughs> at 45 years old, I was ahead of schedule to retire at 57 years old. Within a couple of years of there, a surprise divorce came up after a 19-year marriage. So I was totally devastated. I was four states away from my 12-year-old son at the time, and I was just wrecked. At the end of that divorce, that retirement was dwindled down to a couple thousand dollars. Within a year of that, my dad passed away of cancer. Within a year of that, Wayne, a little over a year, and then within a year of him passing, my mom, after a 56-year marriage, marriage, just didn't want to be alive without him anymore, without her other half. And I found myself a year later an orphan. And you talk about a breakdown. And I just, I, I just completely didn't know anything about anything. The whole world was upside down to me. I was just in this place of disarray. And, and through that process is when I, when I went, you know, I, I got to that point of going, man, I did my very best my entire life to live the way I was supposed to do. I was as good a husband as I could be. I was a good father. I made a lot of money. I climbed the corporate ladder just like they told me to do. 
And now within such a short period of time, all this can just be pulled away. And I couldn't understand why. And then I went into the next step of that is if all this can be taken away so easily, why am I stuck holding on to this one freaking thing that I don't want the job? That opened up a pathway of events to unfold in my life from a book to another book to like all of a sudden things started making sense of that all along I had been focused on mindset. I'd been focused on positive thinking. I'd been focused on what I say and what I think and what I entertain and all of that stuff as the whole enchilada. And what I realized once I clicked on that conditioning that a man gets a job, supports a family, and hopefully lives long enough to enjoy some retirement. Once I connected with that, then I started getting help on how to understand and shift that conditioning. That's what's really opened up the world into what I do. Within six months after that, I had uh, my first coaching certification of, of four that I have now. I had um. I, I was doing workshops. I got my first three clients. And with three clients, I resigned from corporate America. I said, okay, this is, I can repeat this now. I know I can repeat it. I moved down to the South Carolina and live in the mountains of South Carolina where I absolutely love. Awesome. And, and, and everything I do now is based on that. I have a process that's, uh, you have neuro. Um, um, You're mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. For me, it's SMT. It's subconscious mindset training where it helps people because we can do the mindset. We can do the work. We can do the effort. We can do all that stuff. But it's in the subconscious is what how we experience the life ahead of us that we experience. It comes to that. So when we go back and repattern, reposition, you know, reframe it. Not that we can go back and change it, but when we reframe that conditioning, all of a sudden people start opening up. And, and my clients do all incredible things within the time period I work with them. And what you said there, Joseph, is so important. Number one, we have more in common than you know. Uh, <laughs> but what really hit, what really hit me and, and the way I help people, I have a lot of clients come to me, Wayne, can you, can we work on this? Can we work in this section? I'm like, we can, but if we don't work on the unconscious or subconscious, the subliminal side, then you're gonna go right back into that same pattern. And yes. I, was, I was taught, you know, I grew up, in, I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, so I'm not too far from Oh, okay. Me. But I grew up in a place of um, very rural uh, poverty below poverty and <laughs> the middle class, depending on what year you check. Yeah, lower middle. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And so we realized this is how life was. And we, I was conditioned by environment. This is what the average person earns. This is what they buy. They work for 40 plus years and they live long enough to watch. Um, for me, I literally saw people retire means you live on a limited income, you watch the prices right, you watch the soap operas, or the old men go fishing. And it was, I was like, well, that kind of sucks. As you said, at 20 yeah. years old, you realized, I realized <laughs> that's like, that makes no sense to me. Yes. And then I got involved because of number one need and not having the right mentors. I got involved in the corporate world. I was in the corporate world. I was coaching. I gotta tell you this, Joseph, because a lot of people go, wow, Wayne, You've got it made. You're doing all this. But I wanted to see the backstory, too, because we all have backstories. But I was coach. I was working 55 hours a week in a corporate gig, and I was coaching before. So we opened at 7 a.m. So I would contact my clients in Australia and be wow. like, hey, we do 6 p.m. your time, which was 6 a.m. my time. And then I was coaching every day on my lunch break. I was coaching my mm -hmm. home. And one day I was telling a client, I said, you can have the life you desire. And she I said, you can do it. And I hung up the phone with her and I said, hypocrite. Mm. I'm a hypocrite. I'm not living the life I desire. So I went and looked, why am I believing the lies, the embedded beliefs? Yes. Like you said, the unconscious embedded beliefs. And I began to change them. Left the corporate world, went full time into coaching and some, and I have a real estate investing and coaching business as well. So we, we really sort of live in the life. And that's why I was excited to have you on here. I looked at your website and I was like, he gets it. He gets it. And he's helping other people yeah. get it as well. That's so. what I enjoyed about yours. The same exact thing, Wayne. It was like, oh, my God, he's got his design of it. I got my design. But they're really, I mean, you could combine those very, very easily. Very easily, yeah. Because it, it does. I always tell people, you've got to influence yourself first. I have people come to me and say, Wayne, I need to double my sales. I need to, I need to do this. I need to have a better marriage. Great. We can influence other people. Yes. And others is really just a formula of understanding how the brain works. And, and, and yes, but you need to influence you first. 
Well, and here's, yeah, and here's part of that thing is so many people want to get to the income they want to get to. They want to get to the job status, the house, the, the things like that. You know, I had a client that came to me a couple of years ago and he said, I, I want to coach my team. He was the CEO of a company. He said, I want to coach my team, but I don't want to bring a coach in to coach them. I want to get coached and then I'll coach my team. Okay. I don't often get that, but I was like, yeah, sure. I'll coach you. So the first week into it, I realized this gentleman who's a CEO of a company and wants coaching for his team is in a 37 year marriage, 34 year marriage. And him and his wife coexist. They don't talk. They don't eat together. They don't like, it's just, they both stay in the same dwelling. Yeah. And it's like, what the heck is that about? You know? So I, I end up going through it at five weeks into coaching him. He happens to be at a live event I did up in Michigan back when you could do live events <laughs> <laughs> and he's there and he comes up and does a testimonial. And he talked about that. And he talked about how like he came to me, why he talked about that. We opened that up. And five weeks later, you know, he, you know, he said, um, it's like we're newlyweds. Like all of a sudden we, you know, and so he, so that's rolling again, right. In that process, Wayne, I said to him, so let me ask you, what did your wife do? And he goes, she didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's but but it's so funny and it was such a like i i understood so much clearer after that when we shift when a person that's why i love what i do and i'm so passionate about it. when i help somebody go in with what you do when we help somebody go within and tap into the unique talents gifts those desires those inner you know soul desires yeah. and bring those out really the entire world shifts his relationship with his wife shifted and she didn't do nothing different all of a sudden when we got done because i worked with him for 12 weeks when we got done his team no longer needed coaching it's when we shift, the world around us shifts. So all of a sudden he started, and I use these same principles to help multiple companies that were either in bankruptcy or going into bankruptcy. And if you can think about a, what was a $70 million corporation employing 350 employees, and then you announce you're going into bankruptcy, the morale completely shifts and changes and trying to bring that back and stuff is a lot of these tools. But every time you can do that, every time you make a shift, the people in that area will shift. And then, you know, and it kind of broadens and broadens and keeps going like that. It really does. It really does. And I know we talked briefly before uh, I'm a minister and I've told people before that I've never met. I appreciate what you're doing. If we never, we never meet in this earthly realm, if you're doing great work for other people, that shift, that affects someone else, that affects someone else, the ripple effect. And Absolutely. it really will ripple around the world. So we have to keep that mindset. And if, you're, if somebody says, I need, uh, I need more money, I need to start a job, whatever, let's work on the inside first. Man. And I was against, I'm going to tell you this, I was so against positive mindset. I remember, um, my ex-wife <laughs> came home one day with a book. She said, you need to read this. I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. The Power of a Positive Mind. And I was like, I need to read this. And she said, it was, a, it was an old book. I found it in a bookstore. I thought you would enjoy it. And I said, people with positive attitudes can run their head in the wall and be happy about it. It's not for me. And I threw it aside. Give me skills. Give me techniques. But through a divorce and through learning how my mindset truly affected my conscious and unconscious reactions. Yeah. I said, I have to learn. I have to go back and absolutely that began a study of many, many years. So um I, so you you mentioned before never having to work again. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. What does yeah. that mean to you? Yeah, you know, like I put effort in, right? Right now I'm going through and I'm redesigning a new website and I'm coming out with a, a, a new model and I'm coming out with a new program, you know, another new program. And I'm coming like all this stuff is happening together. You know firsthand. There's there's a lot of effort that goes into that. There right? is. There is. But but there's a difference. There's a difference between putting that effort into where our, we're passionate about, what we truly desire to experience, what we truly desire to create in this world, and going and fulfilling our hours at a job that's not fulfilling, that we can't stand, that we got to drag ourselves to, that we, that's what I mean by that. Not working another day in your life, you know, and there used to be the books way, way back when I was in my like teens and twenties and stuff is, is, you know, how to find the work you love and things like that. And they start out by taking you through this progression of, you know, um, what do you like to do? What are you good at doing? What, you know, here's what I tell people, Wayne, I'll, I want to know to be able to help you. And I guarantee my clients results. All I want to know is where are you right here and now? I need two points of reference. Where exactly are you right here? 
And then I help them develop where would you absolutely love to be beyond what you could even imagine. What, what is that? From those two points, I can help people do it, yeah. you know, and move into opening that up. But yeah, that's what I mean by not work another day in your life. You know, yeah. I, I would say, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say I love that because a lot of people as an entrepreneur, I saw a quote that was so cool. It said, people will quit a 40 hour, 40 hour per week job to work 80 hours a week for themselves and call themselves free. And I'm like, I get it. You know, I literally on the way to this interview, I, I, I went to get my afternoon coffee and, and I pulled up and there was my wife and all the kids. And I said, where are you heading? She said, we're heading to the pool. Don't you want to get to the pool? And I love the pool. And I'm like, no, I've got a cool podcast interview I'm fixing to do. For me, now, if she sees this, I'll be in trouble. But I'd rather do this than sit in the pool. And this is what I love, you know. No, I get you. Yeah. And so this is what engages me. And I know it's yeah. not the nine to five. But, you know, there's freedom in it. And I always tell my clients, and I, and I don't know, I love how you said from where you're at to where you want, absolutely love to be. I like to break that in stages. The reason I like to break it in stages is if I go, hey, I want to be earning this amount of money, working this many hours, living in Nashville, whatever, whatever my goal. Oh, yeah. Then I like to break it in stage one, stage two. For me, stage one was the corporate job. Mm -hmm. I knew what I didn't want. Yeah, I made six figures. I paid the bills. We did me all too, that. Yes. Yep. Stage two was self-employment, coaching, leading. 80 hours a week, whatever, doesn't care. Stage yeah. three is I'm starting the lifestyle design. I'm starting to say I only work three weeks and I take a week off. Yes. This is my schedule. I coach for three weeks. I take one week off. Um, and that's what I love. I love why well, wait till 65 or 70 to hope you can take a vacation. Yes. Let's, yeah. let's design our life with that 3 1 schedule. And I tell my coaching clients, I'm taking a week off. You're not. You're implementing this week. <laughs> it's implementation week. I do the same thing, Wade. <laughs> so the three one is, but it also builds freedom around me and my life. So that's stage three. Now stage yes. four is bigger goals, yes. things that I can't accomplish myself, but Man. I can accomplish with Dan Sullivan's book, Who Not How. It's one of the best books I've read in the last two years. But I need to connect with Joseph. I need to connect with my business partner, Brett. I need to connect to build out the bigger dreams. Yes. But that's stage four, stage five. So I'm breaking it in stages. So when somebody no, does that's a crappy day, we go, wait a minute, you're still in stage two. Why are you expecting stage four? Let's get you there. But we had to recognize where we're at now. Very good. Yeah, and, and, and we do the same thing. So so SMT, uh, subconscious mindset training, it's really built on poor, on, on poor, <laughs> <laughs> on four pillars. The first pillar is is the mindset because it is important. If, if, if people that walk around talking about their fear, doubts, worries, and everything, bring more, more fear, doubts, worries. People that go around worried about getting sick all the time and things like that, they end up getting sick. Like that happens. That's true. It's real. Our thoughts and our our thoughts and our words we use have power to them. So there's that part of it. But then there's a dynamic vision road mapping that I do. And I take clients through creating a real, like through a mapping process to create a dynamic vision of that, like you said, the fourth point. I don't always label them one, two, three, four, but I understand exactly what you're doing. It's the same way. And then we start, and then we start backing those up. For me personally, it was like you said, breaking away from corporate America was like, such a huge bold step in my life and took so long to do it. And now I can help people do that. You know, I had a teacher that I helped her, her vision was she wanted to buy these short, retire early, you know, take these short buses, convert it to a hair salon, go to industrial parks and people will walk outside, get their hair cut and go back in within yeah. a year of doing so. She moved it to a larger bus and she put a boutique up front. So it's helping people take those progressions into that. You know, the second step for me was, like you said, building the business and things like that. The third step is like, I take every Monday off, every Monday's fun day for me. And that Friday is my floater day. So there's three days that I book my one-on-ones and, and groups and things like that into. I only work with seven clients at a time. That's the good. reason I do that is because beyond that, I don't, you know, be, what I've experienced is, is when I've worked with coaches who work with masses of people, they don't really have that attention to give me. It just goes through a structure of a call and then you hang up and you go about it. And I want to lean into my clients. They have my personal number, all that stuff and everything. So, so I work with seven clients. The next step of that is that, is that, so the freedom of time. And then the next step of that is I have a corporation called Life Ignited Institute, 
because I want to impact millions of people's lives, part of the whole thing is training other coaches to coach how I coach, to utilize my programs and start expanding the imprint that we're having on people's lives that way. And then my nonprofit, which is going into high schools and working with 10th, 11th and 12th graders. And instead of going to college, figuring out what their paycheck is, help them start opening up and tapping into what is those true desires that they want. We change as we mature. I understand that into our 20s. But you get, I have helped kids that have come out of school that have created one, one in particular ended up creating the system for one of the larger U.S. automotive manufacturers for their warranty system is has it installed in like 70 some de dealers right now and is continue going. You yes. know, so it's helping people achieve that. And greatness isn't always preaching. It's not always coaching. It's not always speaking. It, it, it's finding out what what lights, you know, um, oh, my God, Howard Thurman, is that who said that? About instead of asking what the world needs, find out what sets you on fire and do that, because that's what the world needs is more people set on fire. fire. You know, Set's like, yeah, fire. yes. Yeah. You know, and that's what it really is. Yeah. So it, it, we do have a very similar path. And one of the things I love that you said is, is help them create that vision because most people cannot create a vision because they're still looking at a storyline of what they, I think most people feel unworthy. They feel unworthy mm -hmm. of receiving. And I think one of the things we had, and I talk about this a lot when we're actually teaching our sales training is people from childhood are taught you must have permission. You must have permission to go on vacation. You must have permission to go to the bathroom if you're in school. You must have yes. permission. And we hold that. And sometimes literally on a sales call, I'm like, can I, can I offer you something? Can I offer you permission? You deserve this. You have permission to succeed. And I've literally said that and they go, I do. Let's go. Yeah. And it's, so we're given permission to clients to let go of the past, to let go. Uh, I was an entrepreneur from heart at 13 years old. I started my own, my first business, I guess you would mm. say. Um, what a lesson. But um, it was so funny is we spent, uh, my cousin was 16. I'm 13. We're just born entrepreneurs. We're like, work our whole <laughs> life. We're not doing this. And um, so we run an ad in National Enquirer Tabloid. So we, I was working maybe... I was working at 13 years old. I told you we were poor, and my my uh, cousin was working. We we saved our checks to run a $300 classified ad in the National Enquirer tabloid, and it was for a credit repair program. We had to buy this private label right that we could sell this credit repair. We run an ad, and every day we went to the post office box and looked, and looked, and looked, and one day there was a money order. $16.95. And we were so pumped until we realized we made up a company name. We didn't have a bank account. We couldn't even cash the money order. <laughs> so we mailed them their product. So we were totally, totally no losing. But it taught me something. It taught me. I even asked my dad, I said, can you cash this for us? And he's like, what company is this? And I'm like, it's kind of mine. And he's like, what are you talking about? But, um, but the fun, what I learned in that is if you provide solutions for people, people will pay you. I just had all the mechanics messed up. Yeah. You know, now today, I'm like, if I provide a solution, it's not just for entrepreneurs. It could be people, our students. What value are you bringing to the world? Because you'll be compensated on the value, period. Yeah, yeah. And the pay and the pay that you talked about comes in in multiple ways. It comes in revenue, but it comes like uh, I'm sure you're the same way, knowing how close we we are and stuff. Is like when I have a client that has a breakthrough, man, that that just puts me through the ceiling. It's 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 like man, there's no greater blessing than things something like that, you know? Yeah. What you said earlier about um, what it drives us when I finish up a coaching call, at least nine times out of ten, um, I'm like. I'm I'm charged. I'm ready. I'm ready. So let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Not a ten out of ten, but nine times out of ten, I'm like I'm I'm empowered. I yes. feel great. Yeah. And and so that's something you it's hard to put a price on. And I'm like, I get paid to help people. This is a good business. You know, we yeah. can help people yes. and get compensated yes. by bringing that help. Uh, what would you say? Now, again, my audience, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of coaches, mm -hmm. um, a lot of them have been trained and certified through myself as well. 
but we're always learning from other people. So if I had to, sure. if you had to say, what's one piece of advice you would give to someone that is maybe they want to be a, not necessarily a coach, but maybe so any, they're trying to dream, live a dream life, but they feel stuck in everyday mundane. Yeah. Living. You know, if, if nothing, Wayne, what, 28 years of, of trying it. And I did get help along the way and things like that. But for the most part is I tried to maneuver my own path. I tried, I, I, it was, you know, that 28 years was like climbing up Everest, you know? And even when I had guides, they, they were not the right guide or somebody new to it or something like that. Or, or I, I would say I did, I did a, uh, a, a five day event earlier in January of this year. And it was all about myth busting for entrepreneurs. And one of the top ones I talked about is, you know, we end up, relying on mentors for people for mentorship who gave us our conditioning people living through that same conditioning and things like that you know if you want now i've learned the hard way because i've gotten coaches who their whole goal was to be billionaires off of coaching that's not me you know so i've gotten coaches and paid tens of thousands of dollars to that to realize that truth about that and, and figure out more of who i am but look at somebody who is doing what you want who's the same kind of person who shares values who you know things like that and then work with that person because if you're listening to your family when i walked away from you know it was so it would i don't know if it would have been possible for me to walk away from what i'm doing while my mom and dad were still alive because they were so against something like that you know when i walked they away from corporate, and the paradigm yeah. yeah, when I walked away, you know, when they did the best they could do too, they they were taught that. My dad worked blue collar and just beat himself to death almost with well, work, you know, and and my mom too were with so many hours. But anyways, when when I walked away from corporate America, I lost three really good friends in my life because they said I can't. It doesn't even make sense you would do something like that. Something's not right with that. You're not the person I used to know and things like that. And they were, you know. It hurt at the time, but to my credit, they're absolutely right. I wasn't that same person anymore. I wasn't stuck in that paradigm of I have to, this is only the only way my life can live. So get somebody who's doing it. When I say that's successful at it, look at the success they're having is in a line with the success you want to have. Somebody going after a billion dollars is not in alignment with what I see as being success. Yeah. Having an impact on people's lives is more in line with that, you know, so look for somebody that has that. And because here's the thing, if we go it alone, we're the same person that's holding, that has that conditioning patterns, paradigms. It's the reason why I work with a coach in my life, because somebody can help me see what I don't see living by what's normal for me to live by. Yeah, yes, yes, you're exactly right. And I think every, every coach should have a coach. I have a couple of coaches yeah. and, and to, can say, Hey, this is what we're going to work on today. Do you not see this? Or why do you believe what you believe? Um, I, I think one of the biggest things that hold us back is, as you said, our expectations or comparison. I look at, and I'm not going to name names, but there's other coaches that uh, I have worked with. In fact, one of the things I did as a coach that really helped me just when I was um, just coming out of the corporate world, I said, I'm going to work for a multi-million dollar coach. Mm -hmm. So I applied, I did the contacts, I did everything. And I said, I want to work with you in any yes. area you need me. I want to set appointments. Yes. I want to do sales calls. I want to do your coaching. You're going to pay me to learn how to do what you're doing. And yes. I said, I want to be very clear. Yeah. Um, you're tough. This is not corporate. That's a really good mentorship program right there, Wayne. <laughs> right. Am I going to pay this person $25,000? It's a win-win, yeah. Or am I going to get paid six figures? And so I did that for almost two years, and I really realized the good and bad inside of the coaching. I recognized some of these coaches that had million-dollar years or million-dollar months had a $900,000 expense between fees. And, you know, and I yeah. thought, okay, so maybe I'm seeing it wrong. So I said, this isn't what I want. And I don't want a team of 80 people. I want to work, as you said, with, I think you said seven people. Um, I work with eight people in my inner circle, and that's it. We have some smaller programs that we do, but in our inner circle, we work with eight. And the reason I love that number is, like you said, I know them. I know their wife's name or their husband's name. I know them. And we're going to work, and we're going to bring massive results. And if they can't afford or not willing to invest in that at this point, let's, let's look at another program. But the reality is you've got to be able to know people if you're going to really change their life. they got to learn to well, trust the, you. Yeah, and the other part of that as well, you know, I said I Mondays is my fun day, Fridays is my float day. But, like, I, I every client I work with, I talk to 
at least once a week, but a lot of times, a couple times a week, because the, the way I set the whole thing up is, you know, we can't bump against our conditioning patterns, paradigms, you know, habits of belief, things like that. The things that are limited, we can't bump against them in a scheduled time for that falls into a coaching call. Right. Yeah. And I want people to get as much as they can possibly get. So they have my number. If something happens and something's coming up or going on, I want you to reach out to me right then. Even if it's, you're not comfortable picking the phone up because it weighs a ton, text me. And just say, you got it, Matt. If I'm busy, I'll call you as soon as I can. But every single client I work with, at least some point in working together, re uses that. Yeah. And the reason being is because all of everything I do, just like I'm sure you, everything I do is to touch on those patterns, paradigms, that conditioning. So we can open that up because we have to, we have to shift it, repattern, release it in order to really bring about change in life. Otherwise, if we just keep stuffing it down and we keep ignoring it, we keep living by it. That's the big impact of, of you know, what we do. And I talked about two of the pillars and I'll just really quickly, the other two pillars is, is integration. You know, so many programs I took early on, I went through and I paid the money and I showed up and I did all the effort and everything. And then all of a sudden at the end of it, whether it was six months or, you know, 90 days, whatever it was at the end of it, I just kind of walk away and I, I take all this and, I make sure when I'm working with clients, I help them to learn the process, to learn and understand, make the changes, the shifts, but then carry that forward in their life. Yeah. My, my goal is to help somebody not need coaching as, as a primary. I love that. Part of our, our real estate program is a six month program. And our goal is, I said, at the end of six months, we should be collaborating. Yes. Yes. And now I might do that. Like I won't have insight or you won't have insight, but we should be collaborating and you'll never need this again in this section of your life. So yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and part of the way I end, I end the whole thing because mine's six months. But part, and, and I have people work with me long in that. But part of the way I end the whole thing is I have them start teaching it, whether it's real estate in their office, whether they bring on, you know, a younger person in their family, whatever it is. But, but you know, we start teaching it, we learn it in another depth. That's very, very true. That goes back to um, one of my mentors in the past. He said, "Ilt invest." Be willing to spend the money, be willing to spend the time, learn, yeah. and then teach. Yes. And the teaching is, uh, I could even give some spiritual implications on that, maybe another interview uh, on the teaching side and how it activates <laughs> within. So, but yeah, that's great. How do people get in touch with you? I want to make sure. Um, sure. Yeah, what's your, what's your website? What's the best way people can get in touch yep. with you? So you can go to my website. The name of my company we didn't get to mention is yep. IFGT Life Coaching. And that stand, the acronym stands for it's freaking go time. And there's no better way to describe after all the years of spinning wheels and everything else, how I feel, the passion I feel towards life with yeah. myself, with my works and with every client I work with. So ifgtcoach.com or anybody can go to, I have a website set up specifically. It's called coachwithjoseph.com. And they can go in there and schedule a block of time, Wayne, that we can get on the phone, continue this conversation, talk about what's going on for them, help them start sparking that vision, and then give them some tools on that call that they can start implementing to start moving in that direction. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've enjoyed this, and I'm sure we're going to continue talking uh, after the podcast. <laughs> but I want to give an intro. I want to give everybody the opportunity to connect with you. I know, again, our audience is, is we have so many coaches, entrepreneurs, salespeople. What we have, people that need to go to the next level it doesn't matter and i think it's really important um everybody and I've, I've coached people as you have all over the world and it all comes back to really a few core concepts beliefs mindsets that's holding them back and if we can help them overcome that we can find success so um i want to say Yo, go, please go ahead. Yeah, if I could add one other thing to that. And, you know, you, we talked about, you know, the positive thinking. So I bought, when the, when the secret came out, I thought it was it. I bought the, the VHS because I'm that old. I bought the, the book. I bought the workbook. And I, I dove into that. I knew it was the answer. And after months of that and, and realizing the mindset and things like that, I just, I ended up tossing it all the way and saying, it's all a bunch of crap, you know? And, and, Later on, what I realized is that's the law of attraction, positive mindset. All of that stuff is 100% accurate. But what's been missing for so long is the application into each unique individual's life. And that's what the power of coaching is. Like for you and me both and everybody else doing it is, is you know, again, we talked about the purpose of our coaches is having somebody that can help us see what we don't see ourselves. But it's that application. It's how to implement that on a unique 
basis because the way you would implement it, Wayne, would not be the way I would need to implement Absolutely. it to work for me. So Absolutely. it's helping maneuver, understand and maneuver through that part of it. Yeah. Absolutely. And we teach mindset, skill set, effort, and then faith, favor. But you're right. The effort, most people do not take effort because they don't have any clarity of how to do it or there's an unconscious fear. So then they they past failure. failure. Yeah, exactly right. Past yeah. failure. I think it's one of the yeah. biggest things is we automatically, our mind goes back, we tried this or we tried something similar, didn't work. Let's save the energy. You know, that mind just wants to save the energy. Let's save the humiliation. Let's save the credit card. Well, let's whatever we can save. That's what the mind does instead of moving past that and really advancing. Absolutely. You know, I work with a lot of people that are like in recovery and, th and things like that, you know, and, and help them and stuff. And, you know, I'll tell new people all the time. I won't coach somebody that's brand new in a recovery program, so, but I'll talk to them and things like that. And, and, and I'll tell them, make sure you get a mentor, what they call sponsors, you know, make sure you get a mentor in your life. And, and some people look at me and stuff. I go, here's why. Because if you don't, that means you're sponsoring yourself and you're the guy that got you here in the first place. <laughs> and it's the same way with all this stuff. Yeah, it really is. And as yeah. uh, I called a few days ago, I said the blind cannot lead the blind, or at least they should. It should not. You know, you got to have somebody who can see the path before. Uh, so, Joseph, again, guys, check out his website. The image is going to be below. The banner is going to be below. Get in touch with him. Hop on a call with him. For those who, um, following us be sure to check out our new website updating it every day yourpersuasioncoach.com we have a number of different coaching programs at this time of this recording uh we actually list them out with the with the tuition with the fees everything just open um so you can look at it i think a lot of people look at it and go this is what i need but i still want to hop on a call with you first so let's make sure that is what you need uh but yeah, we're very open. We only work with eight inner circle as of the time of this recording. If you get to the website, it's sold out, then there will be a waiting list. Button. So look forward to working with you guys uh, at yourpersuasioncoach.com. Be sure to follow our podcast. If you're listening to this on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, wherever, five-star review always is good karma. We appreciate it. Uh, Joseph, I appreciate it very much. And uh, again, thanks for being on the call. Really enjoyed this way and just thank you for what you do and how you spread that message out. Thank you.